Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. In this video, we're going to talk about pointer arithmetic. So with pointers, you can use addition and subtraction. And this allows you to update the memory address within a pointer. So that way you can perform arithmetic operations that will allow you to, you know, maybe change what a pointer is pointing at, say. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Okay, so we'll start off by creating uh, an array, an array of integers. So we'll just call this array A, and we'll initialize it with just some you know, random values, okay? So remember that pointers are just variables that hold memory addresses, and arrays are like constant pointers. So I can create an int pointer, I'll call it P, and I'll initialize it with A, right? So what does this mean? This means that P is going to start off pointing to the first element of the array, right? So right now this is pointing, pointing to eight, right? The very first element of the array, right? So what I can do is, is I can use, use the uh, addition and subtraction, addition and subtraction. Okay. So what does that mean? I can use increment, decrement plus equals and minus equals, okay, as well as uh, plus and minus, all right? Um, so I can do something like this. So I could create a loop, all right? And uh, what I could do is I can do something like this. I could say something like C out, and we'll dereference P, okay? And then move to the next line. And then what we'll do is we'll increment P. All right, so what that's going to do is that is going to add the size of an int to P, okay? So well, what do we mean by that, right? Well, the size of an int is four, right? So an integer is four bytes. So four will be added to the memory address that is stored in P, okay? That's stored inside of P because of P++. So if P is initially pointing at A, Okay, or, or at the very first element of A anyway, right? Um, if we add four bytes to what's in P, if we add four to that memory address, well then four bytes gets you to the next element in your array, okay? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna update the memory address. So this is gonna update the memory address so it's no longer pointing at the first element, but at the second element. And then it'll do that again for every iteration of the loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, run this and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So there's your eight, six, seven, five, right? The contents of that array. Now, when we're done with this, what's pointing when this loop is finished, what's P pointing at? Well, it's pointing at the element that's past the end of array A. So remember, you know, it's up to you as the programmer in C++ to make sure that uh, you don't access invalid memory locations. All right, so if we were to, you know, maybe count down, all right, what we'd have to do is we'd have to do something like this. We'd have to make sure that, you know, that we uh, always have our P pointing at the right place. So we'd want to decrement P first, okay? Because remember, P is pointing past the end of the array. So by having our loop, which follows this first loop here, um, start off by decrementing P, that'll t take us back to it pointing at five. Okay. And then, uh, then we'll see out, um, the contents of the memory location that P is pointing to. Okay. So let's see that in action. Okay. So now you can see that we're going in reverse order, right? Five, seven, six, eight. And so that leaves P pointing at the first element of the array. So now if I was to see out star P, right? What would you see? You would see uh, the eight because we left P pointing at the very first element. Okay. So you can, you can uh, also subtract or add pointers together. So I could do something like this. I could do, 
and star q equals um, p plus what? p plus, right? I would, what if I want to get to the end of here, right? I could do p plus 3, okay? So if I do that, then I could see out, because what's p pointing at right now, right? Remember what p was pointing at is that first element, okay? So if I now see out q, right, if I dereference it, and send that to the screen, what am I going to see? Right. <clears throat> I see 5. Okay, you can see there at the very, very end. Why? Why? Right? Well, when you do point arithmetic, the compiler, C++, is automatically doing that math behind the scenes for you, right? So when I say P plus 3, what's really happening implicitly is P plus 3 times 4. Right? Why times four? Because an integer is four bytes. Okay, so this is actually three times, right, times the size of an int. Okay, so that's p plus 12. Okay, so if the memory address, let's just make one up, if the memory address of the first element was 100 for this array, Okay, then if we add three, if we take that hundred from, that's in P, right? Because it's pointing at the first element. And then we add three times the size of an int. We add 12, right? Then what does that give us? It gives us 112. Well, 112 would be the memory address of the last element of the array, right? Because this is 100 plus four is 104 plus eight is 108, or excuse me, plus four more is 108, and then plus four more again is 112, okay? So this um, point arithmetic that's happening, it is being done in the background for you implicitly by C++ based off of the size of the data types, okay? So we could do that. Um, I could also do something like this. I could say, all right, well, let's subtract one. Okay, now remember what Q minus equals, or what minus equals represents. Okay, remember, this is the same thing as saying Q equals Q minus 1. Okay, well, remember what we were just talking about, that implicit math that's going on behind the scenes. This is really uh, Q minus 1 times the size of an int, right? So this is going to be actually going to be Q minus 4. So after this statement executes, right, remember Q is pointing here, but if we subtract four from Q, then that would take us to that previous element, okay? So it would take us to this element right here. And so then if I was to see out um, the star Q again, then what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see the seven, okay? And so there you go, right? So, okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.